Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Have a Pint. Today we have Nooner from Sierra Nevada Brewing. It is a Pilsner style beer. It has 5.2% alcohol by volume, 38 IBUs. Uh, the description on Untapped reads, a crisp, hoppy take on the original session beer. Gather your friends, pack the gear, and head out to wherever the day may take you. A midday go-to Nooner is our take on the classic German style Pilsner. Oh, I know. You're sick. You don't feel good. Uh, one of the original session beers. Nooner is easy drinking yet packed with a big with the big flavor of spicy and floral whole cone hops. Its brilliant golden color begs you to take a sip and sink your taste buds into an extremely welcoming beer, full of flavor and balanced by a crisp, dry finish. You're gonna be okay. She had a lot of fried food, and it is not sitting well with her. She knew better. She is very intelligent, so she, and she knew better. But she did it anyways. Yeah, you're okay. Uh, anyways, so this beer gets a rating of 3.42 on Untapped. Uh, and I absolutely love this can. Sierra Nevada Nooner Pilsner. I just, I love the uh, picture there. All right, let's get this bad boy opened up. And I'm using, not technically a beer glass, but it is the closest damn thing I have to a Pilsner glass. Yep, this is going to have a lot of head. And this glass is not very big, so it's not going to hold very much, and we're going to get a lot of head out of this beer. So we got about two fingers of head. Uh, very light in color. Yellow, basically. Uh, Let's see here. It has that smell of a Pilsner, just where it makes you wish you were at a pool while drinking it, in my opinion. Uh, I can pick out the uh, hop characteristics, the spice. A floral. But I can't tell you exactly what they are. But yeah, I get that just that smell that m reminds you of a pool and what makes you wish you were there drinking this beer. Uh, head rece has receded very fast. Light bodied, carbonating, carbonated, it's crisp. And definitely has a dry, slightly, ever so slightly bitter finish. It certainly has a lot of flavor for a Pilsner. It is one of my more favorite examples of the style, and it, it's stick into the glass a little bit. I don't get spiciness until after, even after uh, you've swallowed, and it it still takes a little bit to kick in. It's like thirty seconds to a minute after you've swallowed the that spice kind of flares up on your tongue and it's right on the front of your tongue but that's very good and I enjoy that I could use a little more spice in it too to be honest uh, 
It's a very good beer, actually. Okay, I'm surprised we're not getting more head here. Because this is a hard-ass pour. Uh, you know, this time of the year, you know, it's summer. Pilsners, uh, wheat beers, whether it's an American wheat, uh, a German wheat, or a, a Belgian white, or Whitmer, uh, pretty much anything lighter is great this time of the year, and this is right there. You know, I just reviewed, I don't know if it'll go up before or after this one, uh, but I just reviewed the uh, Dogfish Head uh, Namaste White, and I said that was when I actually really wanted to uh, go out and pick up a six pack and just enjoy it with the, uh, in my opinion, shitty weather we're having. Uh, if I could get a six pack of this in cans, I would do it. That one I'm willing to pick up a six pack of bottles to do it. Uh, or even a, I guess a 12 pack of cans of this I would pick up, but if it has to be in a, if it has to be in bottle, I'm not going to. Uh, do it, but actually it looks like most people who are uploading photos to Untapped are having this in can, which is very reassuring. There's a bottle. But, no, yeah, most of this is cans. It looks like an old bottle. It doesn't look like it's exactly the same label, so I feel like that's old don't know if you'd want this aging. I actually say I don't know if you'd want this aging. I guess it is technically your prerogative if you want to. I feel like it'll taste terrible. My favorite person to watch on YouTube rev who reviews beer is, um, the channel is called Greg's Beer Reviews. Uh, my biggest issue is he's uh, always uh, complaining about breweries not putting the best are the, uh, you know, a Best Buy date on it or, a, you know, a bottled or a canned on date on their beers. For the most part, it doesn't bother me. But when you get into summer beers or anything lighter, that's when it bothers me. Uh, to an extent like this, you do have to have this fresh. This probably shouldn't even sit in your fridge for four months. Uh, you know, his biggest complaint is... and. I, He's, he's great. Uh, his channel is great. I love watching it. There's a reason he's my favorite one to watch. But, you know, his biggest complaint is it with IPAs. And I can kind of see that. But, and yeah, hops will uh, fade over time. But when you get a really hot forward beer, you know, hops are preservative. It's not, yeah, you don't want to pick one up that's a year old on the shelf. I will agree with that. If you're going to a place, though, that has, uh, that their beer turns over really fast, you don't really have to worry about it, and it's not a big issue. Maybe, maybe he doesn't live in an area that does have that, because he's talked about, uh, seeing IPAs on the shelf that were, uh, packaged almost a year earlier. Uh, I, the places I go, usually, you know, a beer might sit there for, two weeks or maybe a month uh, but of course Omaha is actually a lot bigger city than a lot of people think it is and we have a fair craft beer movement here but something like this I I do agree that you know I would like to see it on all just because you know there are people like him who really want a really fresh IPA and yeah IPAs are better fresh but even if it's been sitting in a cooler for six months it's gonna be fine uh, I'm like I said. I'm not sure you even want this sitting in your uh, fridge for four months. I don't know if it'll taste just as well. But that's because there's literally nothing in this beer. Uh, and that's not taken away from it. It's the style. The style, you know, a pilsner is not meant to have too much going on. Uh, 
So I'd love to see a Best Buy date or a packaged on date or whatever. Or rather, yeah, not even a, pa a Best Buy date, a packaged on date or a, uh, a brewed on date uh, for most things. You know, like, yeah, you don't need an Imperial Stout or something within a certain amount of time, but it is nice to have that so you know how long it, or how old it is, you know. Not because you need to have it uh, within a certain amount of time, because you might want to age it, but, you know, if it's something that's sat on the shelf for a year already, and you don't know that, you know, you're drinking something that's already aged. Now, if it's in a cooler, it's a little different, but, and most places ha uh, store their beer in coolers, but... And so I don't necessarily disagree with him on that. Uh, but for the most part, you know, anything that's medium bodied or bigger, it's not as big of an issue because you don't have to have it too quickly. Like a Pilsner or a Wheat or uh, something like that. Yeah, you're going to want to have that as quick as possible. Like, he says that about uh, IPAs, and, you know, if you want to have it at its absolute freshest, yes. But, for the most part, IPAs are very well made. It is such an oversaturated style that it has to be very well made to even make it in the market, because the market is 50% IPAs at this point. So, it has to be very well made, and if it's a very well made IPA, you'll be fine drinking something that's six months old. You know, yeah, the hops might not be quite where it was, but honestly, you could take, like, a cross-strain fairy nectar or um, Dogfish Head 60 Minute, uh, a Stone IPA, one of those top-tier, in my opinion, uh, IPAs, throw it in your fridge, forget about it for um, eight months, ten months, and it's still going to taste just as good. The hops might have faded ever so slightly, but they're going to it's still going to be good. Uh yeah, it's not going to be as good as if you had it then. And there is a reason why draft beer is so popular cuz it doesn't sit as long. It you know, it's bang bang out out. Uh or you know, there's a reason I love going to breweries and drinking there because the beer is as fresh as possible. You can pretty much guarantee that that beer hasn't been sitting there very long. For one and two, there is not a better smell than it. If a brew, if it's done right, you know you, you want to have it open because you want those smells, the uh, hops that are, you know, hot bags that are sitting around, you know, to permeate the air. You want, you know, that beer that's uh, being brewed to permeate the air. That musty smell. There is not a better smell in the world, in my opinion, than a brewery. It is heaven on earth. There, like I said, there is not a better smell. Oh my goodness. The best example I have, I walked into Oscar Blues Brewery in Colorado and a huge smile crossed my face because that smell was so incredible. There, it is honestly, in my opinion, the best smell in the world of brewery. As long as it's open. Now, I don't know if the Nebraska Brewing Company location that is out in uh, uh, Papillion, uh, which is an area of Nebraska, if that's their original one or not, it is very closed off because it's, it's a restaurant. And then at the end of the day, if you get a restaurant, you don't want it open up to the brewery as much as if you're just a brew pub. Uh, so it didn't really have that smell, and that kind of disappointed me. Uh, you know, just smelled like a restaurant. But that's why I love going to Oscar Blues. Uh, that's why I love going to any one of them that is a, a brew pub. Uh, unfortunately, most of them that are in Omaha are a restaurant. And don't get me wrong, they have good food. But for the most part, they're a restaurant, so they're going to have a different smell to them. Which I've never... I don't really go crazy about some, you know, some restaurants smell good, but I don't really go crazy about it. Anyways,
been a very good conversation. Uh, this Pilsner, which is what we are reviewing. Uh, look at the can again, because I love... I, I've always loved Sierra Nevada's artwork on their bottles or cans. But uh, I also appreciate, like, Ten Barrel Brewing's... Uh, Raspberry Crush, where it's just basic. It just has 10 Barrel Brewing Raspberry Crush across it. It's just a plain can. And I also appreciate that, because it makes you feel like they put more work into the beer than they are into the artwork. Not saying that Sierra Nevada doesn't put just as much work into their beer. Obviously, they do. They're one of the biggest craft brewers in the world, or in the country. Uh, and they make damn good beer. And this is a damn good beer. Uh, like I said earlier, on tap, this beer gets a 3.42. I'd probably rate it about... I'd probably rate it about a 4, because I do really enjoy the spice that they've added to the style. Uh, it's not typically a part of the style originally, but I really love that in this one. Um... So I'd probably say four stars on this one. Uh, and going back to uh, most breweries going away from a packaged on date or brewed on date, or even a best buy date like Sam Adams does, which I don't like as much because it doesn't leave as much open for interpretation. Because uh, maybe you're not as worried about it as they are, you know. But anyways, uh, I won't detract from the rating for that. If it's an old beer and it, and I don't know that, and it doesn't say on the can or the bottle uh, when it was packaged, I don't know if it's old. And if it's a terrible beer by that, it's going to get a terrible rating because I don't know that it's not a fresh beer. And that's why it is good to have those dates on there. Uh, so I'll say this was, had happened to have been sitting on the shelf for a year. You know, it's not going to taste good. And... I'm going to be sitting here uh, rating this going, this is not a good beer, you know, and instead of giving it a four star, I might give it a 2.5 and say that, you know, there's no spicy notes, there's no hot presence, you know, it just tastes overly malty and for a Pilsner, that is not a good thing. Uh, I don't know if it would taste overly malty, I'm not going to age one for a year and find out, but uh, anyways. That is it for this beer. It's an amazing beer. I would definitely buy it if I can get a, a six pack in cans or a six pack or a 12 pack in can. I don't think I'll pick it up if it's a six pack bottle. Because, like I said, I, I try to avoid bottle. I just enjoy cans so much better. I just, maybe, it, and it might just all be in my head, but I feel like beer is better out of a can. But everybody says it is, too. Um, by my personal experience, what I feel like, it is. But like I said, it could just all be in my head because, you know, everywhere you look, everything says cans are better than bottles. But anyways, until next time, Prost.